This is the last time, part one. So this is the last time I'm going to be giving a BBC. And this is the last time I'll be speaking to this particular group of people. And this is the last time that I'll have lunch with this group of people. And it's the last time this morning that I had to clean out Upeka's litter box. And it's the last time that I fed him lunch today, about 15 minutes ago. And it's the last time that I cleaned up Tara's barn this morning with Rumble Damjo. It's the last time. So I'm going to get you thinking about that just a little bit longer. So this phrase, the last time, really came to my mind this past January. And it really helped me get more of a handle on impermanence, which I kind of thought I was getting, but my tremendous ignorance pervades my mind. So I had visited my old dear friend Fred Sutherland in the hospital in December. It was about December, I don't know. Uh, what was it? Something like the 8th, maybe. And he's 95 at that time. And he was recovering from a hip replacement. And he was just waiting to get the word to go home. So I fully expected that my next visit, I would see Fred. I, he would look like the candidate to live to at least 100. In my mind, at least 105. But about, let's see, about a month after that visit, I got the email saying that, in fact, dear Fred had passed away suddenly. He got pneumonia in the hospital, and he was gone. So immediately my mind went back to the last time I talked to Fred. And how did it go? And fortunately, every time I talked to Fred, it went well. So there's some successes here, here and there. But it really got me thinking about the last time. And then the very next day, I got an email saying that my uh, sister-in-law's sister had been hit by a truck, and then she died. So she died a day apart from Fred. Now, in her case, I had met her once at my brother's funeral. So how did that go? Wedding. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my brother's wedding, which kind of went like a funeral. <laughs> but it's true. Thank you. So I met my sister-in-law's sister at that wedding. And, you know, so it was superficial, right? How are you? I'm so... so. That was it. That was the last time I saw her. Superficial. Well, we're going to have those in life, right? But there was some achy part in my heart that I wished I would have had more of an in-depth conversation, but it was a wedding funeral. <laughs> <laughs> so then I kept thinking, then, you know, we're in winter retreat, and I started thinking about other people that I've known in life who have passed away, so I was starting there. And how did that last interaction go? And again, there were some successes and there were some regrets and failures on my part, but it really, it really has stayed in my mind. So that this past May, when I went to see my Aunt Shirley, who was 93 at the time, I'm not psychic, I'm not anything, it was very clear before getting to see her in her apartment that this would be the last time I see Shirley. And so when you have this, when I have this idea in my mind, the whole interaction is very, very different. It becomes very precious. The time sort of gets, the moments get larger. And for me personally, I'm more attentive. So it was a very precious visit. My aunt wasn't speaking. She was sleeping most of the time. And she stopped speaking a few years ago. And there was this little bitty, little tiny woman on the couch. And you know, it was my chance to say what I needed to say to her. 
so then um, her celebration of life happened about a month after that. And again, it was the last time that that group of people would come together. So she had eight children. Well, she had nine children, but one daughter passed away six years ago. So there was the children there, the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren, two nieces, and two friends. So it was the last time that group of 49 people would be getting together. And it was very precious. There is nothing that will happen ever again that will make that group of people get together again. So again, it was a very uh, a rich time of connecting and um, you know, sharing memories of Shirley. So just thinking about this phrase over and over again with people who have passed away, for people who are still living, for people in the past I've had troubles with, then I started working on the people that I have had troubles with. And what was the last interaction like? And so fortunately we have, you know, the opportunity to do purification practices here. Um, but it's cert having that lens of the last time, for me it works better with my mind than just trying to bring impermanence to mind every day. Um, so for example, then I, in my rememberings of things, I then remembered my young cousin who passed away two years ago. He overdosed on fentanyl. So what was my last interaction with him? Well, he kindly enough came to my mother's funeral six years ago. He didn't need to do that. And he came with his father and his twin brother, and we had a really good visit. It was the last time I saw him. And then I think about someone who used to be in my books as the enemy. And uh, what was my last interaction with her many years ago? It wasn't great. But I really am determined to make, if I ever meet her again, I may, that uh, I really put effort into making amends for what has happened in the past and not go into defensive mode and saying, well, if you'd only treated me nicely, I could have treated you nicely and making excuses like that in my mind, and just to have this mind that says, you know, this, if I have the chance, this is the last time I may see this person. So I've got a lot more to say about the last time. So I'll go back to lunch. This is the last time that we're eating lunch in this present state, because we're changing moment by moment. The lunch five minutes ago might have been better than <laughs> we'll be in a few minutes, and if I stop talking, it'll be good too. So the last time, it's something that's been effective for my mind.